Hi guys, it's Thankful Thursday with Rachel and I and this week we have chosen to answer the question Can therapy really help me? Now my instinctual answer to this question is to scream yes it can but I'm well aware that life isn't that black and white so hopefully I can give a little bit more of a useful reply than just yes. So during my recovery process I've had quite a lot of counselling and I've seen several different counsellors. And I suppose during my process I've learned the things that were important to my counselling being successful. Some of the counselling that I've had has been definitely successful, definitely. Some of it hasn't and some of it's been more successful than some of the other counselling that I've had. So some of the things that I found to be important was Firstly, of course, the counsellor or the therapist, and that's their competence in being a counsellor or a therapist, first and foremost, and then also in their understanding of your specific issues, be that in a, a wider sense and that being more specifically to you as well. And you need to feel that they understand what you're saying as well. Um, and I think it's important that you fit with your therapist, your counsellor, sometimes you might and sometimes you won't. And I think that usually you'd know that pretty early on, probably within the first appointment. And if, when looking for a counsellor, the first one that you go and see, you don't feel that you fit with, it is okay to say that and to look around for somebody that's more suited to you and that fits better with you and what you're looking for. Because what's really important is that this is your journey. So you're calling the shots. After that the other things that are important are really all to do with you. Your readiness for counselling because of course many of us in our eating disorder have perhaps been pushed towards treatment when we didn't want it and when you don't want it you don't work with it, you work against it and really you're just wasting your time and the counsellor's time. You also need to be willing to engage with the counselling and when I say willing to engage I mean on a really deep level. It can be very difficult and it can be very painful but you need to be willing to go to where you need to go to in order to heal. You also need to be very committed to the process. When I say this, drawing the counselling that helped me the most I actually made the choice to leave university. I was at the time studying postgraduate qualification in criminology and I knew that I needed to dedicate a lot of my time to myself, to my recovery and to my counselling and that meant leaving and that was probably one of the hardest decisions I've ever made but it really did show my commitment to my recovery and it was definitely one of the best things that I did, even though it was one of the hardest. From that point on, really, my recovery did just go uphill and uphill and uphill. So that's really important. And you need commitment as well, because when things get hard, as is usual with counselling, when you start, things might get a little bit worse before they get better. You need the commitment to stick through that. And you need to be able to trust your counsellor and trust the process and be committed to the fact that even though it might really, really hurt, that it's hurting to allow it to heal. And it's really important also to have hope through throughout that because without hope, you're not gonna keep trying, you're gonna give up. But there certainly is hope. There's, I've fully recovered from my eating disorder, I would say, and um, I believe Rachel would say that she has as well. So hopefully knowing that other people have come out the other side and are healthy and happy can give you hope when there's little else hope because I know it's, at times it can be very, very difficult to have hope in the possibility of recovery. Another thing that might be important to consider as well in terms of counselling is that there isn't just one type of counselling, there's several types of counselling and therapy and different types might work better for different
different people and that's certainly something I'd encourage you to look into when looking for a counsellor or therapist before making any huge choice. And also, of course, I'm saying that my general opinion is that yes, it can help, but it's, it's possible it's not going to help everybody. And um, for some people it might not be the right choice. And the person that knows best whether it's going to help you or not is you. What's really important is that you realise that your recovery is about you. It isn't about anybody else. It isn't a process that's done to you. You recover. And it's up to you to utilise the support available to you to make the most of the counselling that you might receive. And really, I do think that during your recovery, you have to try anything and everything. So if you're asking if therapy will work for you, then it's quite possible that you haven't tried it yet. So I would at least urge you to give it a try, even if you later decide that you don't think that that's going to be useful for you. In actual fact, I myself really wasn't at first willing to give counselling another try having tried it before and so I can understand why you might be asking yourself, will it help, is it worth it? But the counsellor that I'm seeing now and I've been seeing for a while really did, in all honesty, save my life. So I can't I just can't thank her enough and because of that I can't advocate counselling enough as an option to at least try when you're trying to recover from an eating disorder or from any other mental health related problem as well. So hopefully that answers your question. If it doesn't, feel free to leave me a message and I'll either respond back in a message or I can make a second video if that's necessary. Alright, take care guys. Bye.